Hello, me Bonnie Burns, and welcome to episode six of the Superhero Dog Owner Show. This is the show that helps you have more fun and less stress with your pet dog. So today I'm joined by, as usual, Alex, the video guy. Hello. And Alex, I bet you're wondering why, when we've got all this beautiful coastline and pension monument and all the, the wonderful scenery that we've got up here. Yeah, why are we in an industrial estate? <laughs> <laughs> it's not very picturesque. It is very picturesque, but there's a, there's a reason for that. We're in an industrial estate because um, this is the place where they bring you when, you when you're first starting to learn to drive in Sunderland, yeah? where, the, where the driving instructors bring you, where there's next to no traffic, the roads are nice and wide, and hopefully you're not going to crash into anybody. <laughs> or if you do, it's just going to be a skip or something like that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, you're not going to cause any, any aggravation. So this bringing... When they bring you here, this is where they brought me and this is where they just brought our Alex when he um, was learning how to drive as well. He's passed his test recently and it's because it's easy. Yeah, it's nice and easy. And the, and the little segue into that is that I, I want to we want to try and make the dog trainer nice and easy for the for the boys and girls who are watching at home. See, makes sense now. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, see, everything, everything's with a purpose, Alex. You know that with me. Usually, anyway. <laughs> so, so last week I promised you that we would go into a bit of detail and for some things that you can do straight away now today to help you have a bit more fun and have a bit less stress with your pet dog yeah some practical things that you can do Uh, i got a bit of feedback alex from um from my good wife beth Mm -hmm. about uh the pltv that we did previously the previous incarnation of the podcast and i said was there anything that we could do to, to to help people a bit more and and she said that she she thought that when we were out with the dogs, you know, the, the adventure dogs that we work with, she said they're all really well behaved, but when, she, like, she takes Barry and Sydney out, they don't behave as well for her as what they do. They've, you know, they're still pretty well behaved, but, but they're too good. So so what I, so without bringing, you know, a load of um, dis- unruly dogs into the car, what I thought I would do is I would pick out a couple of key things that, that I teach in the book and that we teach inside the superhero dog owners in a circle. Key things that... That, that are, to me, are, the, are like the building blocks, the foundation stones of, of, of good dog training, you know? Does that make sense? That makes sense. Okay, so that's what we're going to cover today. So, Alex, I'm going to ask you this. I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit here. Okay. Um, with your super groovy hat on, by the way. You. You're looking very smart. Thank you. Um, need, what do we need when we're, going to, when we're going to train a dog something, would you say? Um, I would say we need some kind of resource, yeah. whether that's uh, toys or treats, whatever motivates the dog. Good whatever he's, where he's really interested good answer you've Something been learning right? yeah you've been learning a lot yeah but the, the the thing that we need and we use those things to help us get that and i'm doing that thing that they used to do in school where they, they, they ask you a question and nobody knows the answer except the teacher so i'm gonna you, know, so oh, you okay. didn't get the answer wrong but you know you did get the answer right but what it is what we need to have is from the dog is we need to have the dog's attention Yes. Yeah. We need to have his focus. We need to have him looking at us because if the dog isn't looking at you, then the dog isn't listening to you. And it's it it if once you've got that, it's everything else becomes much much easier. You know, you can teach your dog to do a heel or a sit or a down or you know just to look at you and not run away from you. But first, you you must have him looking at you. You must have that attention and the eye contact is so 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 important. Yes, definitely. So. Um, and, and the way I like to teach eye contact is simply to <laughs> say the dog's name, whatever it might be, Susan, Jeffrey, Spike, Bongo, whatever it is to your dog's name, say the dog's name, and then when he looks at you, tell him he's a good boy or a good girl, if he's a, if he's a girl. Um, and it sounds really, you know, easy, and it is really easy, yeah? This is something that you should you should do with your dog. You can practice this like 10, 15 times a day. You should do it before you feed him his food. You should do it before you give him a treat. You should do it before you uh, give him a ball or a game of tuggy or some affection. Whatever it is that you're, that you're wanting to do with your dog, you know, say an eye contact and get him to look at you, get him to look at you regularly, getting him to realise that when he looks at you, good things happen. Yeah, that's, that's really what the association that we're trying to create in the dog's mind is. When my owner says my name, I look at him and good things happen. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. It's an easy thing, but I bet a lot of people don't do it as much as they should. Yeah. Um, because most of the time, I bet some some dogs, when they hear their name, will probably associate with bad things. Possibly getting, so. Getting told off. Yeah, possibly so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And if you can, 
if you can get into a routine of doing this all of the time, then your dog will get into the routine of, of looking at you when you say his name, you know? Yeah. And rather than you wanting to get your dog's attention when he's, his heckles are up and he's straining at the leash to get to that dog that's barking at him across the way, you know, that's, that, that's a, it's going to be much more difficult for you to get your dog's attention then. And your dog is less likely to want to look at you when, when when you're saying his name in that kind of instance, you know. Yeah, but definitely. but if you say your dog's name all of the time when you're indoors, when you're outdoors, when you're in the garden, and you get him used to looking at you, then you the chances that the dog is going to look at you when you really want him to are are, are much greater, you know. So so what we have is we we put together a little video with um, me and Barry and Sydney, and this is a little story that will hopefully emphasise the point that I'm trying to make here about how important eye contact is and how saying your dog's name and getting him to look at you is a, is a really great starting point for anybody who wants to train their dog anything at all. And the story is all about a boxer. So in 1967, Muhammad Ali fought a guy called Ernie Terrell. Now Ernie, in the pre-match build-up, made the fatal mistake of calling Muhammad Ali Cassius Clay and he was pretty pissed off about that. Because being known as Muhammad Ali was very, very important to Muhammad Ali. And the legend goes that during the fight, which Muhammad Ali dominated, he never ever delivered the killer knockout blow to Ernie. Yeah, he made him suffer for the whole fight and he was taunting him all the way through, saying, what's my name, what's my name? And our names are very, very important to us. Yeah, I've met people who wouldn't say boo to a goose, but if you spell or say their name wrong, they can't tell you quick enough. And your dog's name is important too. Although what your dog is called probably isn't as important as what he associates his name with. Isn't that right, Barry? And it's really important that your dog associates his name with, with good things happening to him. Yeah, because then he's much more likely to respond and come towards you when you say his name. And I've got a little exercise that you can do right now with your dog. So I'm assuming you're in the sitting room with your dog now. Yeah, I would like you to say your dog's name in a nice, cheery, cheery voice. And when he looks at you, give him a big smile and tell him he's a good boy. Good boy, Barry. And if your dog gets up and comes towards you, then you can give him even more praise and affection and tell him that he's a really, really, really good boy. Can't you, Barry? And the more you practice this, the more your dog is going to associate you saying his name with good things happening and getting rewards and praise. And eventually, if you do this lots and lots, and you make it really, really pleasurable for your dog, then he will choose to come to, to you, yeah? Even without you saying his name, because he'll know that when he comes towards his owner, he's gonna get some praise and some affection and some rewards. And then this'll help you to have a really good recall when you're in the park with your dog as well. Barry! Good boy, Barry, good boy! What a clever lad. So this is a dead easy exercise that you can and you should do 10 times a day. You can practice it at home, in the sitting room, in your kitchen, in the garden, in the park, at the beach, in the woods, or wherever it is that you are with your dog. And over time, he will associate you saying his name with, with, with good things happening, and, it, and he'll, he'll just want to be with you. So that's a dead easy exercise that anybody can do with any dog at all. Yeah, Alex, would you agree? Definitely. I, no, I could do it. <laughs> okay, okay. We'll see about that. You actually, you did very well with Otis as well. You were using his name and you were getting his eye contact, weren't you? Yeah, yeah so. by the end of the day, that was that that was getting him getting him to come back to me. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, yeah. So, so this is this is something easy that you can do. Yeah, remember the whole point of this episode? Why I've brought you down here is that we're going to do. We need to start with the easy stuff because if you do the easy stuff first, then then you can progress to the the more difficult things. You know, but. If it's no good me coming on here and trying to teach you guys how to do, teach your dog to do a send away and stuff like this and, and and more complicated tricks and stuff if if we haven't got the focus first yeah it's so important that we get get the focus from our dogs and and saying their name and rewarding them with praise with affection and with toys and treats you know the items of kryptonite if you don't know what kryptonite is you need to go back to episode two where we describe all about what the kryptonite is and how important that is for you to to use to help you to to get your dog to look at you and do stuff for you so that's a, that, that's a first thing that's something that I, I reckon uh, when everyone finishes watching this podcast now they should practice that with their dog straight away more eye contact all of the time and using the items of kryptonite the second little tip that I'm going to give in today's episode is to use a magical thing called a dog lead yeah we can use a dog lead to stop our dog from doing the things that we don't want them to do 
Yeah, what 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 so what what type of things does does Otis do that that maybe you you would rather that he didn't do? Um, he's quite dog reactive, so if another mm-hmm. dog passes, he'll want to go over. Yeah, and say hello. So the lead's going to help to just stop him from yeah. running away from straight you. away. Yeah. Straight away, going to do that. Um, being a terrier, he likes to sniff a lot of things. So mm-hmm. quite a lot of the time, if we're walking, he'll stop and sniff something, which is fine. Obviously, you can do that, yeah. but then you yeah. know sometimes he'll linger for ages and ages and and want to yeah. Do so that. again, it just gives you a bit more control. Yeah. with the lead. Yeah, it's going to stop you from allowing your dog. You know, if your dog's problem is that he jumps up at people all the time, keeping a lead on him and using the lead is going to help you with that. If your dog you know, is always eating poo or finding bits of pasties and pizzas and things in the bushes. Keeping a lead on him and using the lead is going to help you to stop him from doing that. And, you know, if your dog always runs away from you when you let him off lead at the park, you could invest in a longer lead, a 5, a 10 or a 20 metre lead, or even just use a bit of washing line or something like that. And, you know, that's going to help you to stop your dog from doing the thing that you don't want him to do. Yeah, we want to, if we're going to, if we're going to, fulfill our promise of making life a bit less stressful for the people who are watching then we need to remove some of the stressful situations that they find themselves in all the time and using your dog lead is going to help you to do that if you use your dog lead and you also try to use eye contact to get your dog to to look at you and come back to you more then just using those two things are gonna are gonna i think give you much more control much more freedom eventually where you're going to be able to let your dog off lead more but they're going to enable you to to control your dog and to 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 you know just give you let, let your dog do the things that you want him to do yeah and don't let him to do the things that 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 cause you stress on your walks and make you wish that you hadn't took your dog for a walk in the first place. So two things this week are eye contact and using a lead. In next week's episode, we're going to be having an interview with a very good friend of mine called Jane Arden. Jane is a, a dog trainer and she was voted recently voted um, the KCAI Dog Trainer of the Year. So we're going to be we're going to be talking to Jane. So if you want more dog training tips and advice, then you should sign up for my daily dog training emails. And you can do that by going to www.mydogsuperhero.com forward slash dog days. And if you do that, you will get a a free chapter of my book. I've shoved that in there as well as an attachment. And what I do is I send a different email every day, giving a little tip or a story or a hint, something that's going to help you to to have a little bit more fun with your dog these are short emails i get loads of good feedback about the emails from people who who have are enjoying their dogs more just through the emails yeah and then they've gone on to buy the book and and so on and so on but but yeah if you go and sign up for the emails that's that's a nice way for you to get just a little a little dog training tip every day in next week's episode we're going to be talking to a very good friend of mine she was recently voted the kcai dog trainer of the year her name is jane arden she runs wagga woofens canine college down in bury and so we're going to be we're going to be stepping inside we're going to be skyping jane and having a good chat with her and finding out more about what she does with her dogs and hopefully i'm going to be able to pull some little nice little tidbits out some bits hints and tips that'll help us help us to have a bit more fun with our dogs so we'll see you next week thanks for the thanks for the setup alex i hope you enjoyed your trip to hendon industrial estate i did i learned a lot (laughs) (laughs) and uh yeah if i don't see you through the week i'll see you through the window